my cheat teacher, um, uh, Jason Mottram, uh, introduced me to uh, LARP um, in the most magical way possible. But there was a theatre and we opened the door and it was just sword and shields and it was like, <gasps> uh, you know, being a 12 year old, best thing ever. Um, I was, I had a friend who uh, had played CP uh, for many, many years uh, and had been out of the game for a while and she was wistfully talking about how great it was, but how she had no one to come back and play with. Um, so I sort of tentatively <laughs> said, well, I'll come with you. Um, and came to the first event last year and absolutely loved it. I had a friend that had been dating for a long time and kept saying it was amazing and I'd love it. And eventually I decided to come and try it. I've been with CP for three years. Um, I found out about LARP after watching a few like American films and I thought, well, what, is there anything like that here in the UK? And we played tabletop Dungeons and Dragons for some years and then um, heard about this place called Treasure Trap. I started university uh, 32 years ago now uh, with Treasure Trap, which was just uh, just set up there. So various people in various clubs I was involved with at the university went there. And I sort of said, oh, no, this is a stupid notion. I'm a, I'm a serious figure war gamer. I push lead dollies around the place and roll dice. But uh, they said, no, it'd be brilliant. So the next thing I knew, I was sort of wearing a white sheet on a battlement somewhere and going, well, this is magnificent. And like, I remember going to this castle in the middle of nowhere on the back of somebody's motorbike. And it was the most magical thing ever because suddenly all those paper and kind of imagination things were just real. Even though looking back at photographs of it, it was, you know, mum's curtains and bamboo sticks and all the rest of it and uh, Mike was never shy of experimenting with the, the the boundaries of gaffer tape and curtain rod in creating some unbelievable fantasy weapons awful gear really bad costumes you know just what you could do at the time very funny I didn't know, I didn't know at the time I was kind of bitten then that it, it was great and uh, that was a really nice time and that's that's where I met Pete and Mike so it's an intensely social thing so yeah so Jim and I and Pete all knew each other from a system called the realm. I set up a company upon leaving university ran a system called the realm and uh, Mike and Jim came to that. But we just ended up on the same adventuring party so at some point myself and Mike were side by side in the dungeon fighting the undead hordes. <laughs> I can remember a moment in one dungeon, Mike fighting bravely towards my monster, and even though the game had finished, Mike continued with some extreme enthusiasm and battered the absolute bejesus out of me. The problem was there was a lack of immersion because the um, active game aspect was the quality of the costumes, and the second was the quality of the game was not very good on the simple grounds of it was unrealistic and you couldn't die. In effect. It was at the gathering in 1995 where the conversation started and I suppose the bit that sticks in my mind the most is where I had a phone call in the evening from Mike and he said he'd been thinking about well could we run a LARP system that size and that, that sort of festival size and I, I'd had similar kind of ideas so we kind of that was a few of the, sort of the spark which we said mm, we possibly should think about this a bit more and yeah we had the will and the wherewithal to do it so um, a group of us were rather fed up with what else was on offer, really, and thought, sure, we could do better. Uh, first time, we did better, and it was a financial disaster. 